The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. This is Jody from Clear Process Solutions. I want to thank you for joining our May Wind Shuttle Web Tips session. This month's exciting topic is Process BI for Wind Shuttle and will be presented by our data and analytics architect, Chris Denisiak. A couple of quick things before we get started. The next Ohio WUG will be held in the afternoon on June 21st at Moen headquarters in North Olmsted. Following the Wind Shuttle user group, we will be hosting a Lean Utopia after party at Harry Buffalo right down the street. So if any of you are in the Northeast Ohio area, we'd love for you to join us. You can sign up on the events page of our website. Our next web tips will be held on the same day as the Ohio WUG, June 21st at 11 a.m. The topic is custom log messages and renew SAP ses session features. So be sure to sign up for that session that will be presented by our senior process developer, Jason King. If you have any requests for future wind shuttle topics to be covered in our monthly web tips sessions, we are open to suggestions. You can share them in the chat window, but also please know you'll receive an email after the session is over where you can submit your topic ideas. One last thing before I hand the baton over to Chris, all the lines are muted, but please feel free to ask any questions in the chat window as I will be monitoring them. With that said, let's get started. Take it away, Chris. Hi everyone, this is Kristen Eziak and I'm the Data and Analytics Architect at CPS. Go to our next slide. Like Jody had said, uh, everyone is muted during the presentation and if you have any questions, type them in the chat window. Um, and then there's time dedicated at the end if we don't address it right away and like Jody said, she'll be uh, monitoring that. A little bit about me. Uh, I've been doing business intelligence for about seven years, which has been the uh, my entire career, really. Uh, I started off with crystal reports and business objects and moved into dashboarding and visualizations with Excelsius, which is an SAP product, and then finally landed on ClickView. A couple of years ago, I started working with ClickSense, which is the platform that Process BI is actually built on. Uh, I was brought on at CPS about three months ago to help with Process BI and creating the best tool set for monitoring wind shuttle data. And that's, uh, that's my favorite picture, I think, of myself. So just to start off, what is business intelligence? Uh, business intelligence is the umbrella term that is used for uh, really everything that is incorporated into what makes up business intelligence. So the tools, the infrastructure, the applications, and uh, sometimes the people. And the different areas that are actually under business intelligence, what I would say is descriptive analytics, and that is more of the, how did I do yesterday in sales? And prescriptive analytics, which is more of a, how can I optimize this process to run more efficiently? I would consider process BI to be more of a hybrid of the two tells you what is happening and actually lets you measure how it can be improved over time. So what is Process BI? Process BI, as you can see, is a predefined set of dashboards that have, has been built by CPS to monitor form and workflow activities. Uh, allows to allows for quick time to insight. What I mean by that is it takes the guesswork out of trying to understand where the data is coming from and make sense of the tables and joins before uh, you even see any of the data. Uh, Process BI is actually fully customizable and configurable, and that means that we've introduced a few new features that I'll cover a little bit later in order to let you have more control over your environment. So that allows you to adjust uh, the duration and what you actually see in the data. And like I have already mentioned, Process BI is built on the Click platform, which is consistently a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant report, which is why uh, Click was actually selected as the uh, platform. So we'll go over some definitions and uh, actual usage before 
uh, I show you anything. So the sheets are what you'll actually see on the screen. Some people will refer to those as dashboards, but they're actually sheets. So if I say sheets, that's what I'm talking about. The navigation can be done in one of two ways, and I'll show you both of those. Uh, dimensions would be uh, the actual things that we're looking at. So we could say someone's name, like a salesperson, or we could say a product as a product description or a product number. Metrics are what we're actually measuring. So we're measuring how sales went or we're measuring how our process uh, has evolved over time, which is the duration. Uh, we have filter panes. And that's how we're going to limit our data in the presentation that we're actually seeing. Uh, charts and graphs. So that's going to be actually what is on the screen, whether that be a bar chart, a line chart, uh, or just an actual straight table that presents the data in an Excel format. And then snapshots and storyboarding. I'll actually explain what that means once we can get into that. So now I will switch over to a Process BI demo. So as I mentioned, the sheets are actually going to be these 11, 11 little boxes across the screen. And the navigation, when I get into a sheet, so I click on Home, and this is going to give you some sample data. Uh, so navigating between the sheets, I can go up here to the top, click on Home, see my other sheets pop up. You actually have the ability to create new sheets. Uh, that's all dependent on security. I'm not going to get into that in this presentation though. So there's these other buttons at the top that go left and right. So if I click the right one, that'll take me to another dashboard. I keep going right and then I can go all the way back. So when I mentioned the dimensions, that would be what's along the left side here. And the metrics are actually going to be what are inside the chart. And the, the nice thing about click is if we go to our ad hoc tab here, I can go in and I can see master items and you can see dimensions and measures. And those have already been defined so that they're actually uh, drag and drop. So if I were to get rid of this, and I wanted to drag in the user, you can see how it highlights the screen and actually would allow, uh, allow me to drag that in. So the filter pane is what you would actually see at the top here. So form year, form year, month, process name, et cetera. That would let you go in and make a selection on the year, say 2017, select it. You can see that everything goes to the top. And any selection that you make will actually go to the top so you can know what is selected at all times. I always point out that that should be a focus area of um, any, anyone that's using the application because you could very easily report wrong numbers if you're not very cognizant of that. So I'll clear that out. Uh, the charts and graphs, like I had mentioned, would be what you see on the screen. So these are all charts. And then if we were to filter down to, let's say, 2018 and the uh, status of rejected, you can see how everything changes on the screen. Uh, the purpose of filtering that is to show you how the detail would come up. So we have detail presented in this format. And this would be your, your chart that's actually a, a straight table. So I'll go back to this dashboard. I'll clear out rejected and the snapshots and storyboarding. If I go to this little camera icon when I'm hovering over this chart, I can take a picture of that and say I want to put that into a presentation and I want to say everything from 2018. When I save that, I can go into this top portion here that's called stories. I can create a new story and I can call this 2018 and I can go into that. And the, the really cool thing about this is you can make a presentation right out of, out of here. 
So I can go in and I can say, I want to look at my snapshots. I have other snapshots here, but I really want to grab this one. I can drag this in, and it's a copy of exactly what you saw on the screen before. Now I can put a title up here. I can put some text down here and explain what it is that I'm actually looking at. And then once I'm done with that, I can go to play. And that would actually let me present exactly what I'm, I'm showing to whoever I want to show it to. And even better, if you go down to the bottom, there's an export story, and you can export this right to a PowerPoint or a PDF. So right from here, it's kind of self-sufficient. You can do almost whatever you want with it. Back, and I think that is my very quick demo. So I'm not gonna do a very in-depth demo, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, the notable features from the newest version of Process BI are visualization improvements. So basically we're introducing a brand new version of Process BI that's been rebuilt from the ground up to be scalable and more customizable. Made it easier to visualize what metrics are actually being monitored. Uh, we've also utilized the master measures and dimensions which, which I had shown to enable an easier and more intuitive ad hoc reporting experience. So you can drag and drop into charts, you can create your own charts based on whatever uh, measures and, and dimensions are there. Uh, some of our customers had noted that not everything that they do is measured in days. So we built a configuration panel that allows you to change your measurement from days to hours or uh, even actually minutes if you need a more precise measurement. The user count sheet has also been updated to give a more accurate number of users. And I know that the, the number of users is important to WinShuttle because anyone that interacts with the system needs a license. And to get into a little more detail about what you can do with Process BI is uh, process specific dashboards. So as long as you're pulling in WinShuttle form and workflow data, you can present it however you'd like. And this includes creating dashboards and reports around a specific process. This can be very powerful because it allows you to tap into data that you actually have to go into the ERP system to see usually. The beauty with Click is it presents everything exactly how it retrieves it. So you're able to monitor your data quality, which is a really big thing, I think, and being in the data space that may be more important to me when I'm going in to actually create these different dashboards and reports. Because if things don't line up and I'm querying on a certain field, I may not see what I, I think I should see. And Click will actually show you that right there on the screen. So I could, I could type in uh, Chris with lowercase, I could do it uppercase, and I could do it camel case, and that would all come through differently. So you'll, you'll be able to actually monitor the quality of your data in there and be able to give a more accurate report on whatever it is that you may want to report on. And like the last bullet point states, the possibilities are really endless. You have a data set, you can work with it, and uh, once you start to work with it, you'll have new questions and you'll be able to explore your data. So I want to point everyone to the new Process BI videos that Justin Barr has dedicated some time to. Uh, he recorded a few videos for Process BI, which are actually available out on our YouTube page. And that can be kind of tricky to get to. So from here, I'll show you the easiest way to get to the YouTube page. So if we go to clearprocesssolutions.com, and we go to workflow solutions and under training we have web tips training and if you scroll down a little bit see cps youtube and if you click there you take us right to the channel and then you'll see these videos top three videos here are the the three latest from justin and then uh, if you go to show more 
There's also a video on the configuration panel that I, I mentioned and on the ad hoc reporting, which gets more into uh, how you can drag and drop different things onto the screen and uh, how you can change charts and basically do a lot more than uh, just see what's, what's there out of the box. And one thing that I'd like to mention on top of that is this is all covered under solution care. So once you decide that you want Process BI, you want us to install it, we install it, you want to have your own custom uh, form-specific dashboards created, we can do that. So anything that you really want to do with your data that you're not sure how to do or just want more uh, more of tips on how to how to actually show it or whatever it may be that is covered under solution care. Now I'm really hoping that a lot of people have questions because I went through that pretty fast, but it was I don't want to say on purpose, but more to spur questions around what we can do and and what is actually measured and monitored. Oh, no questions from anybody? Any last follow-up thoughts, Chris, or are we good? Hi, Chris. This is uh, Justin. Maybe uh, a good uh, topic. I know those ad hoc reports are, uh, you recorded a video on those, but maybe you can go into Process BI and actually create a brand new sheet for everyone and show some of the master dimensions, metrics, and some of the things that come out of the box uh, with Process sure. BI from an end user perspective. So maybe some of the end users on the call today can, can get a quick glimpse of how easy it is to create a, a dashboard. Sure, I can do that. So if we go back to our demo, I will go to ad hoc and go to edit. And then like I've mentioned, the master items are all on the left here. And you can see ones that are created out of the box. Uh, those are the ones that we've deemed to be important. They may not be important to everyone. And if you wanted to create your own, if you have the proper access to do that, you can cre create new. And then you can go through all the fields that are actually in here from all the tables and you can filter down on specific ones you can create your own drill downs which would let you drill through the data so at the highest level we would start at 2018 get to january 2018 and then if you wanted to go to january 15 you can do that so what i would do to start is usually i like to start with just the table so i can see what's there and I drag that out, I'll make it a little bit smaller, and add a dimension, we'll say activity type, and then uh, go back to master items, go to measures, and we can drag in say an average duration. So this is in days. And like I'd mentioned before, we can configure that. So if we go Oops, wrong way. We go to the configuration page. And now I want to look at that in hours. Switch it, and then I'll go back. You can actually see that it switched right there. So that's one feature that we've actually added. If you wanted to change that to a different chart, and Justin's favorite is a pie chart, so I will go to convert to pie chart. So that will actually let me uh, take that same data set that I have and convert it to a pie chart. If you do replace with, it's going to just completely replace it and there will be nothing there. So like I said, Justin's favorite pie chart right there. You can delete that and uh, can create, say a bar chart and you can add dimensions right from here. And if that's not, uh, if your dimension's not on the list, you can actually start to type in. We can say, um, let's see, 
date and it'll search amongst all the fields that are are date. Uh, a lot of these dates in here are actually duplicates because there's a calendar associated with this assignment due date. We'll go back up to the top though. We'll put the uh, form completion year and then scroll down and we'll say completed processes. So it's sorted right now based on the number. Uh, we'll go to sorting and we'll change that. We'll drag this one up. And now it's going to sort by the actual actual month and year. And like I said, that was a drill down uh, dimension. So I will drill into October. And then you can see that it presents the days. Another thing to note is this little scroll bar at the bottom. So if you drag it over, because the axis is a little, little big with all of the dimensions, it'll let me see everything and not have, not just cut it off at a certain point. And then, like I said, the filter bar at the top will let me filter on that same data. So if I want 2015, and this is based on the form created year, so that's why you'll still see 2016 at the bottom because this is based on completion date. If I wanted to click on a specific process name, I could do that and filter as far down as I'd really want to. That's also a very quick demo on how to actually do that. I've been doing this for quite a while, so I can buzz right through it. So if anyone wants to see anything and maybe a little bit slower, you could, you could probably do that. If not, I can turn it back over to Jody. All right, so anybody last minute questions out there? All right, well, thank you, Chris. Um, and as I mentioned before we got started, here are a couple of events coming up. Both the Ohio WUG and the next web tips will be held on June 21st. Information is listed here on this slide and you can register on the events page of our website at any time. Uh, if you have any specific topics that you'd like us to cover in any upcoming web tips sessions, after this webinar, you'll receive a follow-up email where you can submit those ideas to us. And I'd also like to add that this web tip session, along with all of our previous recordings, can be found on our Clear Process Solutions YouTube channel. Uh, Chris showed you how to navigate to that on our website. So once again, thanks for joining us. We hope you found the information useful. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions after digesting all of this information, feel free to contact us at any time. Have a great day.